I'm Lois Banner. I'm the author of Marilyn, The Passion and the Paradox, and I'm a professor of history and gender studies at the University of Southern California. What drew me to Marilyn as a subject for research was that I love to write biographies, and she, in my mind, is one of the greatest female icons of the 20th century. And I wanted to figure out what produced her iconic status. I also work in the field of popular culture, and I also work on physical appearance. So Marilyn was kind of unnatural for me, and I wanted to give her a very serious scholarly biography, and that's what I did. My views on Marilyn have changed in the process of doing this book in most subtle and interesting ways. I didn't realize in the beginning how very complicated she was. I didn't realize in the beginning how very intelligent she was. I didn't realize in the beginning the extent to which she had crafted her own image. I had the sense that she was a dumb blonde who had been made by others. And I thought all I would really do would be to uh, explain her role, her situation, the movie she'd been in. That was my initial assumption. But in the end, it turned out to be very different from that. And Marilyn was or is the most difficult and interesting biographical subject I've ever worked on. My biography of Marilyn is different from previous biographies because it's much more comprehensive. It's much more in-depth. I have uh, uh, traced and analyzed almost every part of her personality and every part of herself, her marriages, her films, her photographs. It all fits into a, a kind of grid through which one can understand Marilyn. No one before, for example, has figured out that she was a trickster, that she put on disguises, that she liked to live different lives. No one before has figured out the depth of her intellectual ability, nor have they realized how she learned to be an actress, what education on all levels meant in her life. No one has fully investigated her sex life the way I have, has found out almost all that can be found out about her sex life. No one has investigated her marriages the way I have. She named the fact that she had been sexually abused. She named it, and that in the 50s was extremely unusual because it was always con considered that the girl who'd been abused had brought the abuse on herself. It was not ever thought to be the result of male desire, that it was the woman or the girl who had uh, brought the male desire to the fore. One of the uh, major things I found out about Marilyn was that she actually did sleep herself to the top. No question about it. Would she have made it without sleeping with producers and directors, etc.? It's, pro it's probable. She had amazing flesh impact on film. On the other hand, because of what had happened to her in her childhood, Marilyn suffered from sex addiction. Arthur Miller says in his autobiography that Marilyn felt she was a possession of men and she couldn't stop giving herself to them. And she says to one of her major interviewers, uh, W.J. Weatherby of, of a major English paper, she says to him, I sometimes felt I was hooked on sex. I couldn't stop having sex with almost every man I met. So she is fixed in the American imagination in terms of the way she looked when she died. And she was very beautiful that summer she died.